thank you for allowing me to testify here today in support of restoring the $4.1 million in funding for the Agricultural Education Incentive Grant. That services, and I think this should be underscored, that this services nearly every region in the state, that services over 78,000 students. You know, as you all know, Governor Brown removed the funding by transferring the money earmarked for this grant to the local control funding, which we've heard from the Department of Finance and the LAO also touched upon it as well. While I'm an advocate for local control funding, uh, just like I believe some of the committee committee members are as well. Uh, this grant, I would say, is not a categorical program and should not be treated as such. You know, there are several factors that distinguish the Ag Incentive Grant as a, such as, you know, it's got a community board, right? And that's comprised of member business leaders, that's comprised of teachers, that's comprised of instructors. If you look at other categorical programs, they do not have that. Right. Secondly, uh, the program raises a lot of money on its own. As we know, the $4.1 million is not enough to sustain these programs, so they go out of their way to actually raise the additional funds to keep this program uh, running. The LAO touched upon earlier about the performance and aptitude. That's another part of this. Remember, this is an ag incentive grant, the key word being grant. They have to perform in order to compete to get these, these funds. These are all things that make this very distinguishable and that make it different than, than any other categorical. Members, as you listen to testimony today by myself, the students and advocates, keep in mind that this, is, uh, that this grant is not only the state's investment in tomorrow's leaders, but also an ag industry uh, that's number one, not only in California, but I would say even across the country. It's no mistake that California leads in agriculture. Uh, California is only one in five regions in the world with the ideal climate to grow the food that feeds America. You know, uh, make no mistake, just because we have the ideal climate doesn't make us leaders. We wouldn't be number one if it wasn't for the hardworking family, students, dedicated farmers, and ranchers who do whatever they can to keep this industry growing. They do it through, throughout droughts, such as we have this year, uh, through floods, whether it's an El Nino year and often at their own expense. And they do it with pride in keeping California the nation's top producer and employer. You've heard the numbers, you've read about them. It's 43 to $46 billion of just our economy in this state alone. That's why I'm here to get today. You know, this program services students throughout the entire state. It gives students an opportunity throughout the entire state. You know, the nominal investment of $4.1 million is pennies on the dollar when you compare it to a 43 to 46 billion dollar industry. You know, that's tax revenue coming back into the state that pays for things like our schools and pays for things like our roads. Without this modest investment, um, hundreds of agricultural programs in our schools could be eliminated throughout the state. There are FFA programs in every region in California. These students are committed to continuing the legacy of California uh, to being number one in, in actually the world. If ag education isn't funded, thousands of students will lose the opportunity to develop the technical and personal skills to grow in, into the strong leaders of tomorrow that our state needs. I can say with confidence that many of our colleagues support this grant and in fact have signed on to letters and co-authored uh, my Assembly Bill 2033. In fact, I have just a sample of some of the, I believe we have 10,000 letters from across the entire state that have already been uh, delivered to the governor. And this is just a sample of them, and I brought these in case any of the committee members would like to look through these. These are all personal stories. And if you guys can see, these are not form letters. These are personal stories from every student, from business leaders, from people in our community talking about what this means, not only to them and their personal lives, but what it means for their communities. This is a program that grows not just crops, and I want us to get out of that. It does not grow just crops. This grows our future leaders. This is an investment into a key sector in California's economy. And with that, I'd like to, I'd like to bring up some of the students so you can hear personally from them as well, if uh, the chair will allow. But you know, just personally, I visited a lot of these, uh, these schools and these programs. And I can tell you, um, for instance, I talked to a student the other day, and he was from an urban district from uh, Los Angeles started in a new high school and said, you know what, I would have never been exposed to this um, otherwise, but I love this program. And to be quite honest, he was telling me, he was like, quite honestly, because of the shop classes, because we're able to do things with our hands, uh, that's the reason why I continue to come to school. 